Hello, welcome to DUE 5012 Communicative English 3. This is lesson 1 and I am Puan Ida Saryani binti Muhammad Isa. Topic 1. Description of charts and graph. The learning outcome for this topic is describe and analyze information contained in graphs and charts clearly and accurately based on a mini project. The subtopic is use accurate labels, titles, and legends in graph and charts. This lesson will describe how to use accurate information to present complicated information in a way that it is accessible and understandable to your audience. When describing graphs and charts, it is important to consider the best way to communicate the information to your audience, especially if you plan to use the data in the form of numbers, words, or images that will help you to construct and support your argument. Generally speaking, data will summarize and it takes in the form of text, tables, or figures. Most people are familiar with textual data summarized and this is often the best way to communicate simple results. A good rule of thumb is to see if you can present your result clearly in one or two sentences. If so, a table or figure is probably unnecessary. But if your data are too numerous, which means a lot, or complicated to be described adequately in this amount, of space, then a chart or a graph can be an effective way to convey the information without cluttering the space. And additionally, charts and graphs will serve as a quick reference for your audience and can reveal trend, patterns, or relationship that might otherwise be difficult to grasp. So the first aspect of charts and graphs is using the accurate labels, titles, and legends. There are four common graphs to convey information, which are table, pie chart, bar graph, and also line graph. A table is a set of facts and figures arranged in columns and rows. A table is a very useful way of organizing numeric information. Tables are easily constructed using your word processor, for example, using Excel spreadsheet. Elements of table will include legends or title column, and also the title as well as the table body. They might also include subheading and footnotes. Remember that it is important to think about the organization of tables as it is to think about the organization of paragraphs. A well-organized table allows audience to grasp the meaning of the data presented with ease, while an, it, while an disorganized one will leave the audience confused about the data. And it is, and it is significant to show the accurate data to the audience. A chart is a diagram that makes information easier to understand by showing how two or more sets of data are related. There are two common types of chart, a pie chart and a bar chart. A pie chart is a circle divided into segments. It is usually used to show percentages. Pie charts are used to show relative proportions, specifically the relationship of a number of parts to the whole. Use pie chart only when the parts of the pie are in the same categories and the sum of parts add up to a meaningful whole, which is 100%. Pie charts are good at showing big picture relationships. However, 
if you want the reader or the audience to understand the distinction within your data, the pie chart is not a good option. You or people are not very good at making comparison based on angles. And we are, we are more familiar in making comparison by looking at the length. So what you can do is you can try a bar chart as an alternative way to show relative proportions. So additionally, pie chart with lots of little slices or slices of very different sizes are difficult to read. So you limit your slices to five to seven categories. Now, a bar graph is a diagram that contains bars or column that makes information easier to understand by showing the differences between two or more sets of numbers or measurement. Bar graphs usually display the proportions. In particular, they are useful for showing the relationship between independent and dependent variable where the independent variable are discrete, which is often nominal categories. Some examples are occupation, gender, and species. Bar graphs can be vertical or horizontal. In a vertical bar graph, the independent variable is shown on the x-axis, left to right, and the dependent variable is on the y-axis, up and down. In a horizontal one, the dependent variable will be shown on the horizontal x-axis, while the independent on the vertical y-axis. The scale and origin of the graph should be meaningful. If the dependent, which is numeric, variable has a natural zero point, it is commonly used as a point of origin for the bar chart. However, zero is not always the best choice. You should experiment with both origin and scale to best show the relative or the relevant trend in your data without misleading the audience in terms of the strength or extent of those trends. A line graph is a diagram containing line or curves which shows the trend of two or more sets of numbers or measurement. Line graphs are usually similar to scatter plots in that they display data along two axes of variation. Line graph, however, plot a series of related values that depict a change in one variable as a function of another. For example, world population over time. Individual data points are joined by a line, drawing the viewer's attention to local change between adjacent points as well to a larger trend in the data. Line graphs are similar to bar graphs but are better at showing the rate of change between two points. Line graphs can also be used to compare multiple dependent variables by plotting multiple lines on the same graph. In graphs and charts, labels are important. So the labels that you must know are the titles and the legends. So in writing the titles for your graphs and charts, titles should be specific and brief. Next, it should contain key features of the data presented. Meanwhile, the legends have to consist the axis. What is the axis? Is it a category or a variable? And axis Y is usually the scale. Here are four tips for writing good chart titles for your mini project. Firstly, summarize the chart data in plain English. You should try to summarize the entire information that you want to display in your chart. The caption concerns the highlight in a chart. The user can know what to look for in the chart. For example, if your chart is talking about the age of the respondent, then the title of the, uh, the chart would be Age of Respondent or 
respondent's age. Next, include the unit of representation. You should include the unit of rep representation of data in the caption or in the subcaption. For example, if your chart is about the half yearly revenue of a company, you should use the caption half yearly revenue 2011 with a subcaption of dollars in million. Usually, the units is mentioned in a smaller font along the axis. Mentioning it in the caption gives the unit more visual prominence. Then, include the time period. So, usually in a line graph, this is where you are showing from one year to another year or from one month to another one. So, if your chart shows the trend of data that is set over a certain period of time, make sure you write it down in your title. It can be written down as the subcaption of the chart to save space or if your caption is already long. Time period is generally represented in brackets. Tips number four. You should avoid using articles like a, an, and the. Another important rule is to keep the caption short and precise. Support the rule by avoiding the usage of unnecessary articles like a, an, and the. Consider the following examples given. The first example, the annual revenue of the year 2011 versus 2010. Compare it to the second title, annual revenue of 2010 versus 2011. So this is a comparison between the title with articles the and also of the. So a shorter sample is given. This is an, an, another example of the title with and without the article the. The first, the top 10 Twitter used by their updates versus top 10 Twitter users by updates. So your title needs to be short and precise. 